that, I'd like to take a few moments and take a look at the uh, basic self-defense system. This is derived largely from a, the work of a man named Merritt Stevens from back in the 80s. I, I first learned this uh, when I was, oh, about a, uh, about a young Q, about a green belt level, um, mm, back in the early 80s. And uh, this system is, is built out of components from Tomiki Aikido. And it, uh, it, it limits it down to a range of activity for, uh, for self-defense application. Um, in doing so, it's found that you don't really need the entirety of the perspective of, of Tomiki Aikido application, or Aikido application in general, to build a fairly efficient system of self-defense that can be taught effectively. In, in his case, he was teaching law enforcement officers, but just as readily you could teach this to anybody needing self-defense skills by basically taking out um, the extra components. The, the rest of Aikido is fleshed out so that we wind up with a, a broad picture and something we can grow for a lifetime of work. We wind up with becoming an actual martial artist and seeing the broader perspectives and dealing with the more complex issues. But on basic nuts and bolts self-defense, you don't really need all the extra stuff. What, what's been found over time is, is you need the first few releases. You need the release movements that we do, probably the first four are the critical ones to pay any attention to, and, and more than the first four, the, the first two do you the most good to take concentration with. And then you need one move from the walk, which is the goblet step. If we're facing forward, let's go ahead and face forward, and we do the left foot goblet step action, and at the same time as we make that, let's come back, we're going to bring our hands up to protect our face with our elbows bent. So this is, yeah. So we take the entire walking kata, the entire tegatata no wada, no waza, and reduce it to just this activity. This is what Merritt Stevens called the basic blocking condition or the basic position. He used this with a left foot stepping forward in a goblet step idea. To, to be his fundamental moment of evasion and his fundamental trigger against a right-sided attack because he found that over 90% of all people on earth are right-handed. Consequently, most typically, if somebody's gonna try to assault you, you're going to be uh, uh, assaulted with their right hand coming in. From this, he developed everything from an attack of a punch. We're gonna get on this side so you can see better. And we have the man stepping forward to punch and we'd like Uke to step forward in his punch, yeah, mainly for his sake. He can, he can certainly throw punches from other relationships with his feet. However, the falling conditions become more difficult for him if he chooses to do so. He's, his target is right here at my chin, and he's going to place it in here and just displace my chin back. He targets right at the chin, and I make the basic blocking moment of evasion. And you start very, very slow like this. You look him in the eye, and you make this goblet stepping action, or this, this turning uh, ten kanashi action, bringing the hands up, making light control just to the outside. And over time, you just have him speed up until he's going as fast as he can. Yeah. Yeah. And you get very comfortable working all the way up to full speed. And then you maybe do 50 or 100 repetitions of that, and then he does 50 or 100 repetitions. And you get very, very burnt in, in a short period of time, the evasion with the left step turning in. Hands up between you and the object that's swinging at you. From that basic point of evasion, there's a variety of techniques that occur. Uh, the first and most fundamentally basic one happens as you extend the arms out in this fashion while at the same time retracting the outside hip in this fashion. And so if I do it without him, you can see very clearly I would make the basic block, extend out and stretch the leg around. I'd make the basic block, extend out and take the ten kanashi in a large turning pattern. So let's put it all into motion right here. He followed this up with cuffing techniques. But in normal self-defense application, we don't need cuffing techniques nearly as much as just a basic locking condition. We need to take them to a point where they're disabled and, 
can no longer come up and threaten us, and yet we don't necessarily all come equipped like law enforcement officers with handcuffs and so going down and getting into the cuffing thing, not essential for the self-defense application, but the evasion, the movement, and this Tenkan form of, of Oshitoshi, really nice. Right here, simple. The second throw that he'd built came off of the same basic position, but it happens as the man pulls his hand back because attacking with a punch, the follow-up naturally is to withdraw the punch. And using that basic activity, as he withdraws his punch, we push in. We follow that hand back with our outside hand and we allow our hip and our foot to trace the line that goes wherever that hand's going. So we're here in the basic block position, he pulls back, and we just bring our hip in behind this push. We'll do it from a different angle. Here, hip in. Nice backfall. This is a basic form of kota gaish. And again, following hip in, you can withdraw and take him back over into a control position. The withdrawing activity that causes him to spin happens, just go ahead and sit down for me. Just as he's in the activity of sitting, there you go, he's in the activity of sitting, and as he begins to fall back, we draw our center backward. We tractor it backward. This causes him to spin. The more tight he is in his upper body, the faster he'll spin around on the, on the gluteus muscles of his backside. So you have the whole thing winding up like this. Useful tool.